If you got caught trying to make the Balaclavaski mask without stretch material, there's no way that thing fit over your head. So I got the proper tutorial, the proper free digital sewing pattern for that project right here. Let's get into it. For a digital copy of this pattern, it's free on my website. Otherwise, if you're looking for the paper pattern, you buy it off the website or download the digital pattern and Google a local print and copy shop to get it printed. This pattern's 14 inches by 30 inches, so it's not gonna fit a home printer. Get your craft scissors, not your fabric scissors, and cut out the pattern. I always recommend cutting out the top half first because it has the GA code, it has a YouTube tutorial name, has the fabric needed, all that good stuff. So I always like to cut that out and set that aside before I cut the actual pattern. For fabric, I'm using this woven tapestry, very similar to what you see a lot of other balaclava masks made out of these days. It's breathable, which is important, and it doesn't have much stretch to it, so it'll work well with this pattern. In this video, I'm using 30 inches by 20 inches of fabric. When you have the fabric ready, fold it so that wrong sides are on the outside, and then clip the pattern to the fabric. You can use sewing pins, you can use sewing clips, but if you have binder clips ready, especially the large ones, sometimes I use those a lot because the handle's a lot larger, so it's easier to grasp, and it's also got a bigger mouth, so it can hold a lot more. These are gonna hold the fabric folded. It's gonna hold the sewing pattern on top. And then make sure you have the place on fold label right against the fold of the fabric. Now we're gonna start cutting out the fabric. You're gonna to wanna to pin down the pattern if you're using scissors or use weights if you're using a rotary cutter. Don't forget to have that cutting mat underneath. I did a poll on TikTok and I found that most people use fabric scissors more than they use the rotary cutters, which I find interesting because for me, rotary cutters is a lot more efficient for the bigger cuts and then having those scissors just for the small nooks and crannies is probably what I would do. That's my preferred combo, but to each their own. Remove the fabric weights or remove the sewing pins and use sewing clips, but don't clip the pattern. Just clip the two layers of fabric beneath and also replace the binder clips. We're gonna run a straight stitch from the back of the neck to the forehead. I have my length at 2.5, my tension at four with the zero because it's a straight stitch. And also test out your stitches, make sure that your tension and your stitch length are all at the right settings by grabbing some scrap fabric that you use to cut out the mask and test out your stitches every time, no matter what the fabric is, test them out. Don't forget to back stitch at the beginning and the end of your stitch. And when you're sewing on a curve, some tips, have some consistent foot pressure and use your hands to pivot the fabric as it's being fed. If you need to adjust or do it more slowly, you want to have the needle in the down position and then lift the press foot up, pivot the fabric, put the press of foot back down and then continue sewing. And just repeat that, repeat that as you're going along the curve. You only want to pivot when the needle's in the down position, otherwise you'll lose your last stitch. And if you stop your stitches, sometimes you could just use your right hand pull the wheel towards you to get that needle in the down position. And before we use a serger or a zigzag stitch option to clean up the raw edges, I highly suggest trying on the mask to see if it fits because this is the point where you can make adjustments to fit your head shape or size. Everyone's got different dimensions, so make sure to try it on before you lock in those raw edges. For the zigzag session, I'm gonna do a tension of four still. I'm gonna have the width at six and my length at 1.5. If you still have the scrap fabric, use that to test out your zigzags as well. And when I'm doing zigzagging, I like to have the needle fall just to the right of the fabric off the edge so that it gets the whole cusp of the edge of the fabric. We're gonna do the eye hole next, but we're gonna zigzag stitch that to prevent it from unraveling. But the eye hole itself won't fit around the free arm because the hole's not big enough. So bring the edge to the presser foot and avoid sewing the back side of the mask at the same time. Use your left or right hand to pull that away from the needle so you don't accidentally sew that shut. For the curves around the edges, it's gonna be a tight curve, but same as before, make sure the needle's down, press the foot up, pivot, press the foot down, sew, and repeat. When you've completed that, grab your chalk and your ruler and draw a 3 8 of an inch line around the whole eye hole, and that's just gonna show you where you're gonna fold. You wanna take your scissors and snip two notches, one on each corner, and that's gonna be four notches total. It's gonna to help when you fold the edge backwards. So before we do anything else, grab that ruler again and draw three quarters of an inch around the mask. And that's gonna be the line that we match the edge with. Get your iron, set it to hot, fold it back, iron it down, and then we're gonna use a quarter inch top stitch around the whole eye mask. 
the eye hole still won't fit around the free arm but i like to open it up anyways just to get a little bit more room for maneuverability and then for the top stitch i like to match up the edge of my fabric at three eighths of an inch and just move my needle to the right one which moves it an eighth to the right thus giving me that quarter inch stitch even though it says three eighths of an inch it's just a little hack that i do same reminders as before back stitch beginning and the end go easy on the curves you know to pivot when the needle's down and then the bottom hem is going to be the same as the previous steps but there's one important aspect to consider you're going to do the same serge or zigzag stitch the edges mark three quarters of an inch fold up iron snip if the curves are being an issue and then stitch at a quarter inch top stitch if you've been doing a zigzag stitch instead of serging make sure to do a bobbin check right now because mine got pretty low but then the most important consideration make sure the bottom hem is the right length if it's too long it's going to hit your shoulders which will move the mask around and then you'll find yourself constantly readjusting it to fit the eye hole so make sure the bottom hem is the right length before you finish it up i got the boxy tee tutorial coming up next Follow my IG at glory.allen for the latest updates on that. And until next time, peace.